This is the Creality K1C, Creality's latest fully enclosed 3D printer, supposed to print all the materials that you want to print. And I'm gonna tell you in this video my experiences using this 3D printer over the last couple of weeks for different projects with different materials, the necessary upgrades that I see for this printer, and if it's the right printer for you. So let's get started. I also wanna thank Creality for sending out this printer for us to test for free and other 3D printers like the Ender 3 V3 and also Noble who sponsored the filament for all of my latest projects that you're gonna see in this video. They are producing ABSX and other materials from recycled industrial plastic, which makes using this filament a lot more sustainable. Starting with the unboxing and the first print experience, which I had in a live stream together with you guys. So in about 30 minutes, we got this printer out of the box and the first print started already, which was this 3D printed laptop stand made of the PLA carpet and fiber a reinforced material that uh, created to send us the hyper PLA CF black. Since we've printed out this project, it has been my laptop stand on my desk all day long. I really love this thing and it really looks awesome. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. What is actually different between this new version, the K1C and the previous model, the K1? Starting with the new unicorn nozzle system, the hot end, is now one part which combines the hot side, so the previous nozzle, and the cold side, which was previously a separate road. Now, since these two parts are now coming together, they cannot separate anymore. Clogging issues should be gone with this new setup, and also Prusa introduced this kind of setup with their Mark IV, Bamboo Lab had it from the beginning with their new printer series, and E3D has it with their Revo system, and Creality now followed up using the unicorn nozzles. Now, this might be a better technical solution. However, that also means you cannot use your previous K1 nozzles on this new version unless there's gonna be some kind of adapter in the future, which I don't see in the near future from Creality, but maybe from third parties. These nozzles cost you about 10 bucks each. So this set here, which is currently the only way to get any of the new upgraded nozzles, is about 40 to 50 euros. And another thing to mention here is that Creality doesn't ship a replacement nozzle of this type with the printer yet. This became just just available in April. With that out of the way, you can already imagine, does this really mean an upgrade that's worth it to you if you already have a K1? So that's something to think about. Let's come back to the original experience now. Getting this printer up and running was done in 30 minutes, as I said, in the live stream. And we had a manual that was easy to understand. Every single step was clearly explained. So from a beginner perspective, this printer is definitely something that's easy to set up and easy to get going. From an aesthetic point of view, I like the look and feel of the printer. We have a glass front door and we have acrylic side panels and an acrylic top cover and everything inside is basically a metal frame and a core XY system 200 by 200 by 250 millimeter build volume but honestly before we can actually continue talking about this printer we should talk about these two other printers here the V100 and the Voron V0. The V100 we built together in a series of live streams so a lot of parts already have been printed on the Bamboo Lab X carbon but some parts once I got this printer I already started printing them on this Creality K1C. For example all these bronze elements are printed on the K1C and that already got me pretty excited because the results were already stunning. The next project that we also did live here on the channel was the Voron V0.2R1S1 complicated name, but all of the 3D printed parts in this project have been done on the Creality K1C and I'm super, super happy how the results look like. This printer is really, really a stunning result. I love the colors and the quality print. The fitting of the parts is perfect, so I can't be more happy with the results. However, of course, I did a Benchy print on this 3D printer. It printed out in 17 minutes. The video is also available on my channel and the result is really, really great. Of course, there's faster 3D Benchy prints, but even on the Ender 3v3, they are already done in, I think, 13, 14 minutes. Are you in for Benchy speedboat racing? This is probably not the printer for this and probably not the reason why you want this exact model. There is probably cheaper alternatives out there. You can print a Benchy in 17 minutes and maybe push it even more with different profile settings. Creality advertises this printer for having a heated chamber. What does it actually mean to have a heated chamber? It's not an actively heated chamber. That means the heat for the chamber is coming from the hot end and from the print bed. And once the temperature reaches a certain point and goes above that, a fan at the back of the printer starts venting 
out hot air and pulling in cool air to keep the temperature at the set level. The extrusion system can work up to 300 degrees Celsius and the heated bed can reach up to 100 degrees. So basically you should be able to print any kind of material. Since we have the Unicorn nozzles, these also have a hardened steel nozzle tip. That means you can print abrasive materials. However, there is not yet any third party Ruby nozzles, for example, for extremely abrasive materials. And Creality claims that these nozzles will hold up until 1000 hours of printing abrasive materials. So that's up to be tested. I also would consider switching to a 0.6 millimeter nozzle diameter for printing abrasive material or composite materials like wood composite materials specifically because these are not going to be extruding very well on a 0.4 millimeter nozzle because of the fact that there is these little particles mixed into the filament and they might cause extrusion issues. Now talking about swapping nozzles and we will review these new nozzles in a separate video because this would basically blow up the context of this video and Creality is announcing this as a quick swap nozzle system. Honestly, this isn't exactly quick swapping. Before you can swap the nozzle, you have to take off the extruder cover here. You have to remove the heat sock that is covering the whole hot end and you have to do that carefully because you otherwise can destroy it. And then you can screw out the nozzle all the way using a tool and then you can screw in the new nozzle and then you have to put the heat sock on again, put the cover on again with two screws and then you're done. Also worth mentioning, Creality ships this printer with a metal sheet that's a PI smooth plate. It's called the A-plate. And if you know the A-plate from other Creality printers, it's also labeled for PLA. What does it mean in the context of this printer? And there's no other plate being shipped with this printer for printing ABS and any other high temperature materials. You should always, always use glue stick on the A plate, regardless if it's the K1C or any other Creality printer. Prints will otherwise stick so well on this actual plastic surface, which it is inevitably, that you're gonna destroy when you remove the print. What's also special about this one here is that there is a little nozzle cleaning area. Uh, this is sticking out from the build surface. That's also the reason why you cannot turn this to the other side. So this other side is not covered with a printable surface. And if you buy a replacement, you can only currently get print plates without this specific cleaning area. Well, it doesn't really matter because the printer automatically detects that there is either this little brush here or not. And I've used a B plate, by the way, which I can highly recommend that you get a, another plate that's called the B plate from Creality that's also coated with PEI, but that's the rough version. And that can print basically all of the materials that this printer can print without glue stick. Nothing against glue stick in general, but I think it's just an easier way to handle prints. Just a few more things before we come to the issues and how I fix them and also recommended upgrades is this printer comes with a touchscreen. It's a 4.3 inch touchscreen. You can control everything that is required from this touchscreen, but you can do the same also over your network. So once you have connected this printer to Wi-Fi, you can control this printer also over a web browser or Creality Print from a computer. And if you do want to print offline, so without Wi-Fi, you can slice your files and then insert a USB stick here at the front to upload the files to this printer. Talking about uploading and slicing files, there's two ways how to do this. First of all, you can use the Creality Slicer software on your computer, which I'm not gonna review in this video, but it just does the job and works with this printer. And an alternative is to use the Creality app on your mobile phone and upload files from there. You can basically go to their online portal and pick out a file that you wanna print and it's sliced in the cloud and then upload it to your printer. Talking about the software that's running on this 3D printer, we talked about the display, but that's only half of the story. On this printer, we have Clipper running, which is a firmware that controls all the movements of the printer and basically the communication between the display and the hardware that's running the motors. And that's what it looks like. Uh, and when you look at the Creality Surface uh, web interface where you can control your printer from here, you have all the controls that you usually need to home the printer, control speed settings, fan settings, look at previous prints and restart previous prints, have an overview of the temperature and also the camera. Effectively you can change any kind of clipper setting that you want, but not from the original Creality print menu. To reach all of these settings, I will create a separate video that explains step-by-step step how to get to that point. You can control a lot more things. You will have a lot more data that you can look at 
to tune your printer and more specifically you have control over all these files that are configuring settings for the printer. But that goes way too much into depth and that's why we want to have a separate video about this. It's now time to talk about the issues that I had using this 3D printer, beginning with a very simple thing that happened right at the start of using this printer during the live stream, the top cover. And the top cover is an acrylic cover that's basically just fixed using magnets on the top of the printer. Now, if you don't apply this properly, it can fall off the printer while it's printing. And we'll look at the reason for that in a second, but essentially it means you have to push it down quite firmly. So we really have the clicking in all of these corners. So it's really firmly attached. So when the print head moves into this corner, this cable chain is going to push against the top cover. If it's not properly attached, that's what's going to cause it to fall off the printer. Another thing that I also don't like, because of the fact that this cable chain is pushing against the cover, it's also going to scratch it quite a lot. The PTFE tube makes a very, very sharp corner once it exits this cable chain and goes into the extruder. And when you insert filament into this PTFE tube, you can already feel it once the filament reaches this point and you push it manually into the extruder, there's a lot of resistance compared to the other rest of the PTFE tube. Either you have some material that's a little bit dated or you're using something that is brittle by design, for example, wood composite material. It is essentially impossible to print this with this setup because it's gonna break. We wanna first attach a frame up here that raises the top cover. And the second problem that you wanna address is how do we print material that is either brittle or flexible, right? because flexible material also has some challenges with this extrusion system. We want to have a top spool holder. So we're starting by removing all four corner screws on the frame, which are the counterparts to the magnets. And then we have these corner brackets, which also have holders for the top lid. There's going to be a hinged version of this, which I'm going to link down in the description of this video. So everything that I'm showing you right now in terms of upgrades, you will find in the video description. And we can fix those four corners using longer screws that go into the same tap holes. Since this is now raising the top, uh, there could also be air going in and out. And that's what we sometimes maybe want if we're printing PLA and sometimes we don't want that if we print ABS. We're gonna use these little slide in panels which are either gonna be completely closed so we can print ABS or we can use these versions here which are gonna be more likely to let air flow through if we want PLA and still keep the cover on. So let's slide them in. And now we could already close the lid and put the lid back onto these screws with the magnets. That should be holding everything in place. Well, that's how the printer looks with the new top razor. And that already is enough to solve this problem of the cable chain touching the lid all the time. This isn't the final version yet because we also have a hinged version. And so that hinge version makes it actually much easier to reach the inside. We can just put the hinge back, access the tool head, and then also just close it back. Last but not least, we wanted to have a top spool holder. So we're gonna swap out the side panels here, taking those out and putting the new versions in. And now we can come with our top spool holder and just attach it to the frame like this. And then we would have our spool sitting on the top, just feeding the filament straight down into the extruder. All of these parts have been printed on the K1C in Nobufil ABSX. It doesn't look that sleek and small anymore, but it fulfills a purpose and especially this top razor, if you want to keep your top lid in a good shape and if you all wanna attach it more properly. Another upgrade that might make sense, moving the filament spool holder from the back to the side. I think if you have the printer standing against the wall, it's definitely harder to reach the filament spool at the back and to feed the filament into the printer. So it's easier for me, at least how I am running my printers, to take the filament spool holder and attach it here to the side. Print it out and then attach it to these existing holes with the existing screws and just mount it here. So the filament spool is going to sit on the side of the printer. This little PTFE tube that is in this filament sensor is definitely not long enough to guide the filament properly around this corner. So especially if the spool is very new, the filament is gonna likely jump off the spool. That's why it's better to have some 
longer PTFE tube attached here. So let's start with a couple of things that I miss on this printer and that I would like Creality to change for a next model. The top cover should be raised above the print head and above the cable chain. Exactly how it's done here with this add-on part, but they should just make the frame higher. So it's again a more complete design and it's still sleek as it was before we had to attach this thing. The second thing that I would change or that I would love Creality to see changing is really the path of the PTFE tube. Definitely this last corner here when it comes out of the cable chain that is very sharp and yeah printing brittle filament is definitely kind of impossible with this kind of setup and last but not least i wish that creality would at least ship one replacement nozzle and maybe have that being a 0.6 millimeter nozzle so you can immediately also use other materials ultimately who is this printer for I think for your first 3D printer, you could consider getting a K1C or a K1. Now, the differences I've described, it's the different nozzle system. And if you're in for that, I think the K1C is very affordable already. It's already discounted a lot. And so this could be a really good printer to start with. There's also a huge community also around the K1 series in general, and people already started adapting things to the K1C. That's amazing because I didn't expect that to happen so early on. I think still, without any modifications this printer can work for a lot of people and then they probably will find that they want to change some things to make it a little more convenient like this top lid that's like this is just so convenient i like it so much if you're never gonna print something that requires an enclosure and don't get me wrong the enclosure is not here for making this printer more silent though it could be a little bit more silent than something like an open 3d printer like the ender 3 series it's really about keeping the temperature in the chamber and then you can also ventilate out any fumes from the abs to the back using a hose outside of your garage or you can also print yourself a filter adapter which i did here for this printer that's actually quite nice because you can use these bigger active carbon filters versus this super super small one that's coming with the printer that's really tiny and not very effective but we're also going to have a look at these two printers soon at least we did already the ke a review on and i'm also going to talk about the ender 3 v3 watch out for that review and then make your final decision i've also put links to getting the printer where you can buy it in the video description so if you're in for it thank you for using my links because they're gonna help me without you paying more also all of the parts that i've mentioned in this video these upgrade parts the 3d printable part i've put in the video description down below so you can find them there now to the ones of you who have been watching this to the end and the loyal viewers of this channel i want to mention that all of these three printers the k1c the v3 and the v3ke are going to go into my giveaway queue you better check out my twitch channel the link is also down in the description and then you will learn once you watch your first live stream on the channel how you can win awesome stuff on this channel and with that i want to say you thank you again for watching see you next time on the channel for another video or another live stream bye bye